South Africa's finance minister, Pravin Gordon, says he has complied with a police investigation in a widening dispute which has rattled financial markets in Africa's most advanced economy. An international monetary fund team to visit Mozambique at the end of September for an update on the southern African nation's struggling economy. Plus, Rwanda signs a $8.18 million deal for a new international airport. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the program. I am Bosin Namafai. This is Business Incorporated. Let's start with the G20 meeting in China this weekend, a major talking point around the world. But also on the deck for traders and investors is the U.S. August non-farm payroll report expected to come in at 180,000, and that will be as soon as the market opens on Wall Street. So let's kickstart the show with Annette Wiesberg at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange in Germany, and that is DWTV Channel's television finance correspondent on the floor of that exchange. A good afternoon to you, Annette. Let's start with the U.S. jobs data expected later today. How is the market trading ahead of the release of this very important economic data? Well, we're seeing the market reaction directly behind me at the big billboard. There were quite some disappointment, but I think the market still needs some time in order to get actually their, uh, their, 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 their sentiment right or the idea of what to do with that new information right. I mean, it was a little bit disappointing coming in at 151,000 uh, jobs for the month of August compared to the consensus of 180,000. Jobless rate also a little bit higher than uh, people had expected 4.9 percent, but overall, I guess, uh, people need to wait a little bit until they find, as I said, the direction the trading is now going. Of course, on that negative news from the jobless market, one could also say the time of the cheap money will uh, be a little bit longer than people had expected, and that also means that the Fed might not hike rates as soon as September because the job market is not performing as stellar as they might have expected. Yes, we'll keep an eye on that data. But of course, uh, as we all are ahead for, uh, to the weekend, the G20 meeting in China is very, very key. Various heads of states are already arriving uh, over there in Hangzhou in China for this meeting. What do you think will dominate the discussions at that summit, Annette? Well, very high on the agenda, at least if you look at interviews given by Christine Lagarde, the head of the International Monetary Fund, also uh, the U.S. Treasury, Jack Lew, um, is yeah, trade, liberalization of trade. We've seen a move towards more protectionism um, within the group of the G20 countries in the last two years, which is going, di going against the general spirit of globalization, the general spirit that free trade will actually is needed for more growth worldwide. So that will be on top of the agenda, at least with the IMF urging everybody to go back on the ta to the table and to be sensible in not uh, raising tariffs once again. Of course, also high on the agenda will be more fiscal stimulus. The Jack Luzu, U.S. Treasury Secretary, was saying ahead of the meeting that um, a majority of countries uh, represented at that meeting are now behind the idea of um, <clears throat> uh, investing more money from the state also in order to revive the economy, so use their fiscal space, as they call it, to get growth restarted. Uh, Annette, thank you very much for, for your time today. I got a question for you, but let's warehouse that until Monday. Do have a great weekend, and let's get back together on Monday to start another brand week in September. Uh, Annette Wisbeck, who is uh, DWTV financial correspondent, financial um, uh, journalist at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Asian markets finished some green shoots today on the countdown to the keenly anticipated U.S. non-farm payroll, or what you call the jobs data, while European equities are also showing some positives at this time. In other markets, I the jobs data, the U.S. dollar was flat this morning after falling 0.6% on Thursday on the week U.S. manufacturing data. Brent crude climbed a little early this morning after losing more than 8% in the last five days, thanks to Russian President Vladimir Putin talking up the next OPEC meeting on Bloomberg. Now let's broaden the conversation around the jobs report.
Paul's vlog with VOA. Channel TV correspondent in New York, Jill Malandrino, is joining us live via Skype. It's early morning in Washington, New York, East Coast. Thank you, Jill. Good morning. Thanks for coming through. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, yeah. special thanks to around the world. Yes, it's been, around the world. yes, I just want to ask, uh, it's been a very nail-biting week full of economic data, uh, but today's NFP is very crucial. Uh, what's the charter overnight uh, acro uh, around the markets, uh, dinner table, what will likely happen today? So, well, the employment report came in at 151,000 jobs and an unemployment rate of 4.9%, and that was a bit below expectations. We were expecting about 180,000 jobs. Um, and uh, so it, it, recall that the Fed has made it expressly clear that labor data is the most important piece of data that it will be taking into account. So I think that it, because the report wasn't quite as good, we're seeing right now I'm looking at um, S&P futures on, on my computer here, and we're seeing that the market has rebounded a bit, about six points in the S&P, because it might suggest that the Fed won't raise rates in September. We're actually seeing the rate, uh, the Fed fund rate uh, percentage go down a bit here. That's a bit of a dampening market optimism ahead of that data coming in early today. But if you look at Europe and Asia, things seem to be a little bit positive. We've seen some green shoots ahead of this uh, NFP. Uh, do you think the numbers will still be the straight? 255,000 was the expectation. 180 is what the actual will be. Where do you think we're going to be? Right. Okay. So we have to take a look at data overall. Data over the past couple of months has been quite strong relative to what we saw earlier in the year. Solid performance in the labor market and reduced risk to economic outlook have encouraged the Fed to take a more hawkish stance on raising rates. But there have been a few reports that suggest otherwise in other parts of the economy. For example, yesterday, a report from the Institute of Supply Management, that's a manufacturing report, showed that U.S. factory activity contracted for the first time in six months in August as new orders and production tumbled. Motor vehicle sales yesterday also showed signs of some weakness with the consumer. Markets sold off yesterday morning. In fact, the Dow was down about 100 points, but ended up rebounding to close green on the session. So there, is, there are a lot of mixed signals. We have to take all of this into account. Again, right now, the initial reaction, we're up about seven points on S&P futures, but it's all going to depend on what happens when U.S. markets open, 9.30 New York time, to really get a sense of how traders are going to take in this latest employment data. Yeah, uh, overall, Ajil, what, what do you think the takeaway will be for the weekend or for the week as we step into September, mm -hmm. as you get back to your workstation today and begin to look at how the market is reacting to this? Well, that is the key question. Momentum has faded in U.S. stocks after a rally added almost Four trillion dollars, that's four trillion U.S. dollars to equity values from the February 11th bottom. Since a slew of all-time highs ended a 14-month drought in mid-July, the S&P 500 has been stuck in neutral, and mixed economic reports and speculation over the time of the next Fed rate continue to increase. So this is what traders are looking for. They need volatility to come back into this market to get either moved to the up or downside. Liquidity is very tight right now, volume is anemic, and that makes it tough for traders to establish positions. So outside of the Fed, the U.S. dollar in our national election could have an impact on the market. A higher dollar has a global impact on trade balances and the consumer. And I think that's really what the biggest issue is. We are also keeping an eye on the OPEC meeting in the next few weeks. But nothing came out of the April meeting, so expectations are very low that anything meaningful in terms of production cuts and supply and demand balance will come out of that. So I think right now, the, the near term, what's happening with U.S. equity markets and particularly the dollar because of trade balance are the two big things that I would be looking at. Very, very interesting, uh, Jill, because uh, just checked the dollar uh, index a short while ago, uh, a bit of it uh, trading water, but still in the, in the green, uh, as it were. Thank you very much, uh, Jill uh, Malandrino in New York. Thank you very much for your time today.